thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. Tonight on Q2, former President Donald Trump makes history for the wrong reasons, then speaks out. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. That speech in front of hundreds of his supporters, his first since being charged with 34 felonies. Plus, inside the search for Billings School's new superintendent. Support of education, communicating with parents, and that fine line between putting the lid on top of teachers and what we can teach. So I kind of want to just find a balance with that. We'll take you to a public forum where the community gets to meet the final three candidates. And a winter wrecking ball. You hate to see your fellow business uh, neighbors, you know, have any kind of suffering, you know. Blizzard like conditions and heavy snowfall collapses the roof of one Red Lodge business. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. And I'm Russ Riesinger. Former President Trump is vigorously defending himself tonight after being charged with more than 30 felonies. Yeah, there was no mugshot taken, but he was fingerprinted. CBS's Christian Benavides is outside Mar-a-Lago with details on the historic charges and Trump's response. Former President Donald Trump railed against Manhattan prosecutors during an event at his Mar-a-Lago state Tuesday all. night. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election, and it should be dropped immediately. Trump showed little emotion earlier in the day as he walked into a Manhattan courtroom where he pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. They set up shell companies. District Attorney Alvin Bragg alleges Trump concealed hush money payments to three individuals threatening to reveal negative information about him during the 2016 election. $30,000 to cover up a story about a child he had out of wedlock and more than $100,000 to two separate women claiming sexual relationships. Catch and kill scheme. That is a scheme to buy and suppress negative information to help Mr. Trump's chance of winning the election. Trump's lawyers say they'll file a motion to dismiss the case. The next hearing isn't scheduled until December. He's upset, but I'll tell you what, he's motivated. CBS News legal analyst Jessica Levinson says the 34 counts come from 11 different payments. The invoice, the ledger, and the check. Now, why do we have 34, not 33? Because I believe for one of the hush money payments, there's two ledger entries. The judge did not impose a gag order, but did ask the defense team to remind Trump to refrain from making statements that could incite violence. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, West Palm Beach, Florida. It's the intersection of politics and justice playing out on a national stage. But what is the impact of the indictment and what could it mean moving forward? That's the question we put in front of University of Montana political analyst and journalism professor Lee Banville today. That whole legal question is is a, a big question mark right now. All we know is that process is starting and it's going to take a long time and it's going to be really complicated. And more legal developments for the former president. This one about his alleged role in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. An appeals court denied Trump's appeal to block his top advisors, including Mark Meadows, from testifying. The Billings School Board is expected to choose the district's next superintendent as early as tomorrow, but not before tonight's public forum, where the community got to hear directly from the final three candidates. Our Phil Van Pelt was on hand and lets us know exactly what the public is looking for in the race to replace current superintendent Greg Upham. Those three finalists were under the spotlight once again tonight, but this time the community had an opportunity to ask their questions as the school board gets closer to a final decision. How can teachers be better heard and how can parents be better heard? The Tough Questions Tuesday came not from the Billings School Board, but from Billings residents. What is your plan to reduce violence in our classrooms and ensure safety towards teachers and for students? As the public got a chance to interact with the candidates vying to become the next superintendent of the state's largest school district. Support for teachers. You know, it's been a rough couple of years in the education industry, so um, 
teacher retention is a really big concern. Clark is a teacher and a mother of four children in Billings. She, like the dozens of other residents gathered here, had a long list of questions they wanted answered. It's always good to shake things up. I'll be interested to see some change. I really want someone who's willing to listen to parents. Um, that's been a huge deal over the last few years with COVID and the books. The three finalists include Erwin Garcia, currently the superintendent of the Houston Independent School District in Texas. He oversees 24,000 students in 53 schools. Schools don't change, people change. And people change if you give them the conditions and habits change. The other two finalists are from Montana. Tom Peck is the superintendent of Lewistown Public Schools, a position he's held for six years. Being visible. Getting out there, starting to form partnerships, meeting parents, meeting kids, um, getting involved in community service. And Brenda Koch is currently the executive director for Billings School District 2. She was previously a superintendent and principal for Elysian School. I think it's important that we have a venue for parents to be able to have conversations with the district. Billings residents who took part in the forum said they were looking for someone who will make an impact for a long time in Billings. We need someone with some background in uh, Montana, in our district, in the issues facing our community. A final decision is expected to be made on Wednesday evening. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Old Man Winter packing quite a final punch. Al flurries though here in Billings, but throughout the day, an absolute nightmare in our neighboring states and communities. Red Lodge receiving around 10 inches this time around, only adding to that three feet of snow they saw just a week ago. All that snow likely the cause of this, the roof collapsing on Bone Daddy's, a custom cycle shop there. Alina Howder takes us to the popular tourist destination for the story. It's snowmageddon here in Red Lodge, and Bone Daddy's custom cycle is the weather's latest victim. The business's roof collapsed sometime Tuesday morning. From whiteout conditions to snowbanks as tall as people. We've had uh, 49 inches last week and then it started snowing again, so it added to it. The city of Red Lodge didn't come out of this snowstorm unscathed. The event center of Bone Daddy's Custom Cycle on Main Street collapsed just before noon Tuesday morning. I own the building just south of this one. Charles Trexillo owns the old annex hospital right next to Bone Daddy's. He's heard some theories about the cause of the collapse. That's what uh, everyone thinks. It's just snow load. But the Red Lodge Fire Department won't know what exactly caused it until engineers investigate further. We can't say what the, the cause of the collapse was. I can tell you that um, there was no fire. There was no um, gas explosion or anything like that. Thankfully, Bone Daddy's is closed on Tuesday, so no one was inside and there were no injuries. But the fire department is taking precautions. The electric, the gas, the water have all been cut off to the building. Um, and so now the biggest danger exists is the structure itself. Firefighters say the building is at least 60 years old, and so are many of the surrounding buildings. One reason several nearby apartments have been evacuated. Firefighters are worried about possible structural damage to those buildings too. There was apartments up here and they have to vacate, you know, for safety reasons. As for Charles Truxillo, he's not worried about his own building next door. My roof is different and, uh, you know, so the snow doesn't stay there and doesn't build up like it did on this one. He and others are just thankful. Thankful no one was hurt despite the devastation. Stuff is replaceable, but people aren't. In Red Lodge, Alina Howder, MTN News. And if you head farther south, the conditions were even worse as some of the Cowboy State saw record snow totals. Check out these pictures. This is in Casper, Wyoming. It saw 27 inches of snow. This was on Monday. That's an all time record, shattering the previous record of 24 inches set all the way back in 1982. Well, Interstate 25 through the entire state was closed for most of the day, and in some cases the drifts were so high. Yep, you can see that they completely covered those cars and doors. Now let's get it over to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh for the very latest on this storm system tonight. Here's Doppler radar over the last several hours and you can see the snow flurry starting to diminish around the Billings area. The snow has been light enough that a lot of it just doesn't show up very well. But as we start getting into the next couple of days, as you look with the Stockman Bank weather cam for tonight, First, we'll see some slick roadways in the morning. Of course, the heavier snow closer into the mountains, you'll have additional problems still trying to dig out. But there will be warming as the winds start to increase. A high pressure ridge builds in. Suddenly, temperatures really start to take off and 
that's going to bring out the potential of some ice jams and some localized flooding in and across the region. As far as cloud cover goes, we will get some breaks of sunshine tomorrow. A little bit of cloudiness, but really starting to clear out later in the week. More on the forecast coming up. Tonight, a local hero is in a fight for his life. We first met Travis Salter back in October when he jumped into the big ditch to save some teenagers who had driven their car into the ditch. But just months later, Salter is battling stage three colon cancer, and now a Billings promoter is looking to step up to be his hero. Our Charlie Kleps has the story. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Travis Salter was referred to as the King of Billings during his time playing football with the Outlaws. But it was in this ditch where he became a hero after diving in and saving three young girls' lives. But now, after receiving a difficult medical diagnosis, he's left fighting for his own. Travis like Superman. Travis like the guy that's always going to be okay. Tyler Johnson has seen Travis Salter's powers up close for years. So he wasn't surprised when he heard about Salter's heroics last October hurdles a fence and jumps into a uh, the big ditch and saves three girls from drowning to death. I mean, that's him. Salter, a former Billings Outlaws star, was watching his son's football game when he saw the car go into the ditch. He didn't hesitate. I just think when it comes to the world we live in and seeing opportunities to where you can help, I mean, that's, that's just one route I've always tried to go. But now the tables have turned. Salter is the one who needs help after being diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. I knew something was wrong just based on my health and the way things were declining. Johnson was one of the first in line. The Big Air Bash, an extreme sports event at the Metro this coming Saturday, organized by Johnson, will donate all proceeds from their live auction to Salter. Honestly, if there's kind of a silver lining to all this, um, there's no doubt at how much I'm loved and cared about. It's life altering, like how supportive it's been. Like to me internally, there's a change inside of me moving forward that there's just no way you can't get because it's been absolutely incredible. Salter is known for his physical strength and toughness, but he says this battle will test him in other ways. Honestly, this isn't, it's not a physical challenge. This is, I'm learning is, is an emotional, psychological, mental battle. But if you ask those close to him, they're confident. Confident that his toughness will once again prevail. If I'm going to pick a fight with someone, Travis Salter's the one I want on my team, so I know he's got this. He always put himself last, and this time we get to put him first. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, aiming for the future. St. Vincent announces big plans for their emergency and trauma services, and we'll break that down next. And later, a bill to boost Montana ambulance providers has passed the House. We'll dive into the impacts in just a bit.